more in tune with all that good stuff and just kind of going you know what January is kind of this really interesting void month of of still having being so attached to the previous year where it's like trying to get that gum off of your shoe you know it's like nope it's still here it's still here and it and it takes a few weeks uh for it to really feel like we're in a new a new year um also we had or have we still have for a couple more days mercury retrograde and that has been interesting that is for sure as well uh definitely this you know like <laughs> Like, oh, I thought we were starting a new year. Like, bang, go, you know, like off to the races. And it's like, not so much. We're still, you know, getting on our gear for the race. The race is in like an hour. And you're like, oh, huh. I thought we were going to just, whoa, here we go. Not so much. And, uh, but that's okay. That is okay. We needed this time to still sort some stuff out to uh move slowly to contemplate what we're actually going to be doing in our movement in our energy going forward coming up in this month the big one coming up in this month that i have been focused on and there is more going on like we have we have no new moons in February because officially this new moon is um, on the 31st of January and then we have the new moon on the 1st of March but no new moons officially in February. Uh, we had the full moon in uh, or on the 16th I believe. But the big thing of the month is uh, the 22nd. So, well, the second as well. So we have the second and the 22nd, you know, all those twos happening. Uh, with the second, that is the start of our Stargate, the beginning of our Stargate. So from 2-2 two, two to 2-12, two, uh, 10 full days. The 11th day is like that, that end day, that landing day, if you will. That's how I always see it. And um, so strap in right away as we get started with this month. The second day um, we have, so we have a couple things happening at the beginning of the month, which is Mercury stations direct. And we also have the beginning of the Stargate. So everything is moving forward. We also don't have any um, planets um, in any kind of retrograde until April. So there's going to be a lot of movement forward. Also a lot of that air energy with Aquarius pushing uh, like quick movement forward so it's going to be like oh we've been waiting for the race to start like da 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 and it's like okay we're gonna go okay so we're gonna have like this push of of um kind of decisions and choices and changes and and you know just things kind of more sorted out for us uh as as we move forward um probably things we've been waiting to have complete or decisions made or what am I going to do or or you may have thought like oh this is going to be the direction I'm going and then things completely shifted um that happens as well or has happened and will continue to kind of you know get a put a bow on it as far as that's concerned um in these next few weeks but again back to the 22nd because that's where my focus has been these last several weeks I wrote the article on Medium about three weeks ago, at least, about the 22nd of February, way, way ahead of time, like six weeks before the actual day. Also created the storybook to go along with it to prepare those that are going to be um, attending to... Uh, to prepare themselves on the inside and in their space on the outside for the portal that we're going to be creating. So as soon as you get that storybook, you will have the instructions on creating your portal on, um, on beginning on doing the prep work to create it and working with it every day leading up to that's the day of Tuesday, the 22nd as well as inner work to do questions to ask yourself stuff to to evaluate yourself for 
um, as far as to, to what you need to work on to clear yourself, clear your energy, uh, to really get things sorted out mentally, emotionally, energetically for yourself before this big portal day on the 22nd. So for all the information on that, um, please check out that, that medium article, uh, about it. I have all the information there. It's a long article with a shit ton of information about that day, what it's all attached to, as well as what's going on with the event, what it, what we're going to be talking about, um, and channeling Merlin, what he's going to be getting into and all that good stuff. Uh, so there's that. Um, okay. Kitty, kitty, stop. Kitty, stop. Um, alrighty. Next. Next up on the agenda. Uh, oh, and I did want to say if you have, um, let's say you don't know if, like, work or whatever, if you can make it to the 22nd event. Um, it's at starts at noon Pacific on the twenty second. I believe it's noon. Pretty sure it's noon Pacific on the twenty second. Um, if you don't think you can make it, or if it's in the middle of your night and you know you can't make it, or you know you you have to work or whatever, but you are going, you want to get the replay. The replays are going to be available, or the replay is going to be available. I don't know why I made that plural? It's just going to be one replay. Um, that you can download and listen to after the 22nd. So that's going to be available on the 23rd. So what you can do is let me know that you're going to be downloading that when you do. Um, and what we can do, and that there is a charge for that. I think it's going to be, um, uh, it's on the website. I think it's like $22 or something for the download because you get all you you're basically getting the workshop without being there. You just couldn't be there, but you're getting all the information. You're getting the meditation. You're getting all the information from Merlin. And if you know that's going to be the case and you're going to be wanting to download that, just let me know ahead of time. As soon as you want, I already did this with with one one of my clients. Another client, she's like, "I'll um, can I get the book ahead of time? I don't get pay, I don't get paid for a few more days, so I sent her the storybook. She's going to pay me in a couple of days. I sent my other client." Um, a storybook because, you know, I said, just, you know, if you can make it to the live, then go to the live and pay then. Or if you got to do the, the, um, the replay, then do the replay. Obviously being there live and doing it live is best because you you can interact with me, ask me questions, ask, you know, when there's a time to, to get in with Merlin. Um, so that would be optimal for you. But you can still get the storybook as soon as tomorrow if you choose to. Um, I work on the honor system. So if you say you're going to do it and you're going to pay for it, I believe you. I trust you unless I have any reason not to. I will send you the storybook so you can get to work on it right away. And then just send your payment later whenever that makes sense. Okay. So FYI, whether you need some time to pay for it, to pay for the event, you know you're going to the event, but you just need you just need a little bit of time to pay for it, but you want that storybook ASAP, let me know. As well as you don't know if you can make it to the event live, but you're definitely going to get the replay and you want the storybook now. Both or any other combination, <laughs> reach out and we will work it out for you. Okay. Now let's move on. Now I'm here and we got the go again. <laughs> we got the go ahead. Um, the topic of the day, before we get into the Oracle and um, see what the Oracle messages are, which by the way, we're getting going to work with the Hidden Worlds Oracle and the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Already got that. They're ready to go. Um, topic of the day, and this is something that came up a few days ago because I saw a post and it's not something that I've seen in a while. But it could be circulating back again. I don't know. I, I don't really, unless it, it it naturally, organically, you know, comes into my world. I don't go out seeking for stuff because a lot of things that people put out there in the spiritual community is just not true. Or, um, and it's perpetuated. It's like one thing gets out and then 
people go, oh, that's a thing. And then they just spread it like wildfire, even if it's not true. And one of those things is walk-in souls. And walk-in souls is definitely not a real thing. I don't know exactly where it started from, but I do know that it was basically um, like a Trojan horse, a high, a spiritual hijacking. Um, one of the spiritual hijackings that we can experience, there's several, and I'm working on an article about them all. So I'm not going to get into all of them, but I will I will hint you the, the themes. One is flat earth. That is a spiritual hijacking. Um, one is twin flames. That is also spiritual hijacking. Um, one is reptilians. That is also spiritual hijacking. Walking souls is another spiritual hijacking one. Um, even veganism, that is a spiritual hijacking. Um, although that is in itself kind of a separate category. Um, but that can get kind of fanatical in the sense where that is like all you pay attention to and and everything surrounding it is so consuming that everything else about your spirituality is just way down the line and that happens with a lot of people unfortunately because it is it is such an overwhelming energy in the world and trust me I get it um but it can it can overwhelm us so that's an interesting one twin flames or twin souls that is a real thing but not for nearly ev definitely not for everybody it's like 0.05% of the of the incarnates are possible twins or are twins and and so the actual like it's probably like 0.01% or half of 1% of actual twins that do um, actually come together and stay together and work together whether they're meant to be romantic partners or not because they're not always supposed to be or meant to be or are that or have incarnated in that in those even possible relationship types but the point is is that there's way 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 less like think about the population of the world that are redheads and then cut that by like a quarter and then so like make that an eighth and then maybe that's a close to what you would say that's how many twin flames are poss are possibles because it is it, it is such a difficult journey being a being having that situation people just don't understand what that all what all that entails and again i'm not going to get into all of that right now i did write an article everything you want to know about soulmates and twin flames that is on medium um i know i will talk about this more in the future but i can go off on any of these for a while <laughs> and explain 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 but the one that i meant to talk about today is uh walk-in souls um so and this is going to be pretty quick because really quickly you'll be like oh yeah that doesn't make any sense real fast here really 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 quick um but essentially the the story of walk-in souls means that um <laughs> there's a spontaneous switching out of souls in a body the soul that was born into that body leaves, ta-da, goodbye, and a new, completely different soul comes in and takes over. Basically, body snatchers. So what I just described to you is not possible. And like I said, I'm going to say something that you're going to go, oh, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And here is what it is. Nobody. can leave their life without dying, period. It goes against any kind of universal law for that, just for people just to, or souls just to spontaneously pop out of their body. I mean, think about how many people just be like, oh, I, life kind of sucks, but I don't need to die and go through the whole life cycle. I can just pop out. 
<laughs> bypass death and the cycle of life. I mean, how fucking ridiculous is that? I mean, that's just as ridiculous as flat earth. Um, but to me, even more so, honestly, honestly, because the, the, it's so, it's such a simple, uh, answer here as to why and how that doesn't work. So let's split this up into a couple of things. Number one, a soul cannot just leave, pop out of the body indefinitely. We're corded to our physical body. We can, re that cord can be really, 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 really long, interdimensional. I've experienced that. I've gone, I've gone up to the highest dimension through wormholes, still attached to my body. So much so that archangels told me I had to come back to my body because I didn't even feel it anymore. I was like, I'm here. I don't need to go back to my body. They're like, you have to go back to your body. You can't just leave, decide to leave your body. If you do this, you'll be literally catatonic and kind of between worlds. You have not died. You're confused. I, I was so comfortable in this space and I write about it in another article in Medium. Um, that I just was like, no, I don't, I don't want to go. And they're like, uh, you don't have a choice. Nobody just gets to get out of life without going through the cycle. And you have stuff you need to do. You need to go back. It was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> it was kind of funny. But that was the, um, the trip that... And no, I wasn't tripping. Maybe I had smoked some weed, but I was not on any psychedelic. Let me make that clear. Um... Uh, or any strong psychedelic. Um, marijuana, I guess, is considered a psychedelic. But anyway, I digress. I digress. That was when I was um, invited <laughs> to go and visit. And and I didn't know where I was going, but I was invited. It was like, oh, what's this? What's this? I wanted to do a meditation uh, on meeting my, my spirit guides. And all of a sudden, it was like... There's this big blue bright light off to the up and to the left and this energy saying come into the light and I was like yeah let's do that so I did that um and it was a whole thing again something I'm not getting into right now I have talked about it before I have written about it before but nevertheless one of the things that, that the purpose of that was to show me, you know, that I wasn't really sick, that my body was really strong, that I was always a healer, that um, they didn't tell me all of it. They didn't tell me I was an, an, an angel incarnate or an archangel incarnate. They didn't tell me a lot of stuff. What they did tell me was that I've always incarnated. I've always been a healer, a guide, a medicine woman, a, med a shaman of some sort throughout time. Um, going back, 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 um, being a priest, priestess, and doing all this every single time. This incarnation was very different for me, especially the first uh, four decades. And I, I knew I was psychic. I, I knew I had certain abilities, but I was also extremely ill. And that's that uh, medical medium, shaman, psychic, physical empath part of me that can feel other people's bodies in pain. Um, either nearby or long distance, especially after I knew what I was doing or could do. And uh, it was very enlightening. Again, they didn't tell me everything. They told me enough for me to start putting myself together and understanding some shit. <laughs> this was over 10 years, about 10 years ago. And but what the the thing that was so explicit was you cannot not go back to your body. You're still alive. You have not died. You once the body dies, the 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 blood stops pumping, the heart stops, the you know, everything stops, then that is when the soul can leave the body, be completely leave the body, permanently leave the body. But until then, that is not a possibility. Okay, so there's that. Number two, we... <laughs> that was hilarious. I said number two, and the recording was at 20 minutes, 22 seconds. Ay, ay, ay. So many twos lately. Um, okay, so number two is... Uh, 
the the idea that we had that there is another soul especially a light being soul that can that can come in and and effectively you know take over our lives that that would even be a thing is it is so impossible because that just that's very dis- that would be extraordinarily disruptive to um humanity as a whole that somebody would just be gone that their everything is you know because you don't get to have the same personality and have a different soul those two things are very much interconnected so it's not like soul a leaves but patty is still the personality of patty when soul when soul you know b comes in doesn't it wouldn't work that way you would it would be a completely different identity um and personality etc cetera, etc cetera. and that is not something that is even it's not it's not it also goes against like the universal laws like it's just not pot it just isn't a possibility you have to go through the life cycle you have to die another body another light being body cannot come in and take over even as angels and archangels were not allowed to just pop into people's bodies to take over a life um Think about what that would do to the fabric of time, the space time, um, the 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 web of life, the akashic records. What is in what are the timelines that connects a soul and a life to from one th- place to another within their their uh, their own personal web of life, that soul's web of life. I mean, it's just it's it's ridiculous to 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 have to have that. Also, any kind of possession. So so it is a body snatcher kind of thing. You know, it's like um, possession is never done by the light. Possession is done by the dark. Um, by taking over somebody who is in fear or is in pain, who has an open door that, that allows that energy to come in and take over. And it doesn't happen very often, not to that degree of completely taking over the identity of somebody. Um, it does happen, but mostly what happens is there are degrees of possession. And that's what we're dealing with in just everyday life with everybody. When people are ill and sick and mentally disturbed, et cetera, et cetera, they have attached to them energies that are affecting them, that have possessed their system and is um, um, infecting that system to some degree, mentally, physically, emotionally, energetically, is a parasite shifting the energies, pulling, extracting, being that parasite, um, but still to be able to completely take over all the time, 100% takes immense power to completely take down um, the consciousness of a human being. Um, and when it does, like I said, it's always from the dark and it and they're fully fucking batshit done crazy with um with this evil entity taking over them and that's what we know is like you know the exorcist type type of possession and how rare is that really truly very very rare um so yeah (laughs) even the narcissists that have the puppet master type um parasites that that come in and really take over uh they can't be in full blown like control all of the time it would take way too much energy to suppress the the individual but they do it enough to manipulate that identity to do things that are negative or self-serving that creates that negative energy that the parasite feeds off of um but still that person is far from completely totally taken over uh it takes again an immense amount of of power to do that now could an archangel effectively do that yes they would be the ones that could possibly that could do that but they would never do that because of all sorts of reasons that are just pointless to get into we need to be born just like everybody else and we need to go through that process um and it is a process you can't just pop in and pop out 
Um, you know, so really just if you're somebody who has thought, you know, maybe that's a thing or whatever, you know, I had such a shift in consciousness, my everything changed, my whole outlook on life, blah, blah, blah. That's a spiritual awakening. That's not being taken over by another soul. That's not anything coming or going or anything like that. Um, but there are, but that is very much, you know, people that believe that, that perpetuate that are really, it's really kind of like, you know, who are, who, who in the group is so easily manipulated into believing these things that are logically, um, energetically, spiritually, even by the laws of, of creation on, and in, not possible and not true, you know, who are, you know, who are, are manipulate are, are, are so easily bendable to believe something like that. Those are the people that, that will, um, you know, buy into a lot of other stuff too, that, you know, will be used, um, for their energy and really hijacked out of their spiritual ascension process. And that's, you know, the reason why I'm coming and talking about this is, you know, if anybody, if you know of somebody, if that is you or whatever, to just please, um, you know, have them listen to this podcast, please, you know, take this, take this in and really think about, you know, logically, how does that make sense? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Walk-ins are not possible. You must go through the life cycle. Every single person, any star seed, any angel, any archangel, any fae, any galactic, anybody who is going to live in a human body needs to be born as a newborn and needs to die in their body. <laughs> that is the the contract that everybody um, uh, has to accept before they are uh, born and, and come into body. You do not just get to bypass death. So, like I said, really easy on that one. Probably went on with it for too long. But there's different there's different aspects to it, to, to that. So to to think about. So anyway, there's that. Feel free to reach out with your comments or whatever. I know that there's people's like, yeah, I, I posted on Instagram. I said, because I saw somebody post, somebody post, somebody that I followed posted that. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, <laughs> why are they posting this? And I posted on my stories. I said, this is not a thing. I don't know who started this nonsense. But it, I'm sure it's some dark side shit just looking to weed out the people that are easily manipulated and believing this kind of shit. And, um, and one of my followers messaged me and said, yeah, I've never heard of this, but how that immediately I knew that wasn't a real thing. So, and he was like, I didn't even know that, that this was even a story that people told. And I'm like, yeah, bypassed you because you're not somebody that would believe that. Um, it's coming into my awareness to show other people this is a thing. And if you hear about it, if you know people that believe it, please, you know, speak up and, and talk logic to them and make this go away. Because anybody who's like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. Um, and really, you're... <laughs> you're really like in a riptide of your own ascension because you're you're basically like com completely handing over and surrendering all of your power um when it comes to yourself if you're saying that you've been body snatched or you can be body snatched the only way to be body snatched is by any something dark so if you believe they can be body snatched and you're literally saying to the dark i can be body snatched does that make sense? So I hope that makes sense. Again, let me know if you have any um, any stories or thoughts or questions or whatever about that. But I can unequivocally say that is not a thing. It's not a real thing. It's as false as, you know, uh, flat earth. Um, and everybody has a twin. And politicians or reptilians that are shapeshifters. Yes, there are reptilians. Are they what they're kind of made out to be in many circles? Absolutely, 100% no. Um, another false narrative that people get into and obsess over that is just not real. Okay, so you can hear me, I'm sure. Uh, 
shuffling, shuffling. My cards, I have two decks here we're going to be working with. Uh, really interesting, not working with the Moonology deck this time. Usually for moon type business, we do, but not today. Um, so today we're going to get started with the Mystical Shaman Oracle. So take, take my deck, shuffle it up, and then split it in two, Decide, put them next to each other, decide which side, left or right, and just keep paring down. I've still been guided to do it this way. So I just kept left, kept left again, and getting down here. This time keeping right, the right pile, and then from this I'm going to be Putting out my cards, I have two, four, six, eight cards, two rows of four, one on top of each other. <sighs> to get our card. And we're gonna go with this one. The second card from the top row. Thunder, card number 56. I have yet to see this card um, from this deck. And I've had it a couple months now. Um, so, but still have yet to see all the cards in this deck. Um, but let's go to card number 56. Thunder, really cool card. And I will be posting pictures on my Instagram. Um, which, by the way, I decided not to, um, or I was guided, I should say, I was guided to go back to having a public profile, not a business profile, but a public profile. So um, I didn't know that there was all the restrictions on a private profile. Um, anyway, but so now you can just easily, um, you don't even have to ask to, to follow me, you can just follow me. If you do not already at again, infinity underscore 963. Okay, so here we go. The Essence of Thunder. I'm reading directly from the book here from the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Legends speak of great thunder beings who live in the sky and call for your attention when great occurrences are meant to happen in the world. They warn when tensions in a situation are called upon to be released. Their presence in your reading reminds you of the dramatic moments in life that change everything, both awesome and frightening when thunder arrives. It is also a wake-up call, one that you will not soon forget. The invitation. When thunder comes into your reading, it refers to a big dramatic change that feels like a herd of wild bison on the run. You feel it right through your bones and you know that you are powerless to influence whatever events have been set in motion. This is the time to be prepared for anything. Your life is an adventure and wonderful opportunities are arriving now. The trick is to learn to run with them. Qualities that you'll need now more than ever are flexibility, dexterity, and a willingness to experience it all without dictating from where or in what form opportunities will come. Your destiny is arriving. Be ready. Oh, I love this. I love it. I love it. And that is so much. Again, you know, these energies that are coming with the new moon are, are really connected. And, and I talk about this through, um, in the, in the article, but, but if you look back and I was guided to do some really interesting, um, kind of investigating as I was getting the information for this two, two galactic or two twenty. 222 2022 galactic portal 
And there's really interesting things happening with it that's all connected to it. And there's this build up to it. So it's like that's the day that the button gets pushed. But it's everything that's happening up till that day. And to me, this is kind of what it's saying. This new moon, this new month, this, you know, Mercury going um, stationing direct and the Stargate and everything is this major, major energy and push forward um for what is coming in what are these big shifts and changes that are coming and they will be big uh, we may have thought that things were settled but we realize no they're not decisions that were made that we thought were were you know stuff that were we could count on no they're not um you know people we think are fully gone no they're not um you know situations that we thought we were going to be doing or whatever changing um things just coming in in a very different interesting and interesting ways and we just have to really uh again prepare ourselves for that this is it's like no once things are like now is the time to be to prepare you know, now is the time to prepare before, you know, to get yourself as clean and, and clear and grounded and stable and energetically sound as you can possibly be before these big things come into play and, and, and start happening. You know, it's like, that's the real test and how you handle it, right? It's like, if you've been a slob all your life and all of a sudden you have to, you know, um, say something happens and now you, I don't know, I don't want this to be tragic, but if you're somebody who's been working out and you find yourself in a situation where you have to, where your physical fitness is, you know, a matter of life and death, you're going to be like, wow, you know, I wasn't really preparing for life and death with, you know, being somebody who worked out, but being somebody who took care of myself and, and, you know, really has served me because now I'm in physical shape to, to, to you know, be able to, to survive let's just say whereas somebody who's been a slob sitting around their whole life you know eating bonbons and cupcakes and never moving except for to go to the refrigerator and not doing any kind of internal work whatsoever find themselves in a life or death situation their odds are going to be much less positive because their whole life was preparing for um to to have this lack of energy right so this is a time where it's like all this, there's stuff, there's things that are going to be coming and transpiring and, and, and ways that you can't, you know, you can't really specifically prepare for, you know, we don't, some of it we might have an idea of, some of it we won't have any idea of, you know, what's coming and what's going to, what's part of our destiny, you know, like this says here, your destiny is arriving. Be ready. What does that mean? Be ready. It means be energetically, physically, emotionally, um, spiritually sound, stable, connected, and flow. Um, to do your inventory about where your energy is, what it's connected to, what uh, what what your focus is, what your priorities are, et cetera, et cetera. You know who you're connected to, who you're working with, who you let go, who you open the door for you know who you say goodbye to all of these things um okay and i'm gonna read the medicine portion this would be this would be like if if we this was in reverse this card did not come out in reverse it came up straight up thunder um but i do like to read all of the information here so let's get going the medicine <sighs> do you feel like unnecessary drama is waylaying your life could you be exhausted from listening to others tell you their never-ending victim story or could you be telling yourself a version of the same it's time for an about face you're being warned that to continue on this path will cause you to regret your choices even if they appear benign or familiar it's time to say no to drama both yours and others focus on solutions rather than problems you are worthy of a drama-free life. Yeah, that is exactly um, something to, to assess, to think about. And um, that is also kind of 
a little bit of the theme of in that storybook for the 22nd. So I'm not surprised to see this advice here. Let's assess where the energy is going. Who, where's the drama in your life? Is there drama in your life? Where's their chaos? Where does it come from? What are those relationships? What's happening there? How do we, how do we fix this, rectify this? So we're not living in this state of being because that is going to, speaking of spiritually hijacked, that is definitely, you know, kind of a, a spiritual hijacking when we're caught up in, in being in situations, relationships, experiences, partnerships, whatever with people that aren't in alignment, whether there is or there is an actual drama, you know it, you feel it if it's not, you know, working or if it's not going to work. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, it's the avoidance of of um, handling uncomfortable situations that we let things go and go and go because nobody likes either a confrontation or a breakup or a dissolution of a partnership or, you know, things to change from what we thought, you know, it was. But unfortunately... That is how we change. That is how we evolve. That is how we move forward is by, you know, assessing where we're at and making those very distinctive choices as far as how we need to move forward. And it talked about dis dexterity here and being um, that it's an adventure and things are we just have to be uh, willing to 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 move ourselves in ways that that is going to to serve us basically rather than hinder us so thunder big energy here you guys big big energy um <laughs> yeah it could be just overwhelming in the sense of a lot of new uh uh overwhelming energy even if it's positive, even if it's kind of magical, it could feel like, whoa, a big, a big shift, a big change, like paradigm change, that kind of thing. Um, and this is not to say that, you know, on the 22nd, boom, this major thing will happen. But what it's saying is, is that what it's, what it's all kind of coming into is, is the building of the future and how you work with that energy and what that what those that portal and that galactic portal and that that actual portal to build in your home is all about um, and working with it so anyhow we're gonna get to our uh, hidden worlds oracle now so just one card from mystical shaman I think that was a good one on its own pretty powerful and now we're gonna do the hidden worlds one more shuffle here again split in half right or left I'm picking or staying with left right this time and we're just gonna fan these out we have one two three four five six seven eight nine cards i think oh no ten cards a little bit more here <laughs> they're sticking to the table okay so you'll be able to see each of them <clears throat> Alrighty. Okay, here we are. Spirit of Spring, Freedom, Action, Power. Oh, this is a beautiful card. Um, it's like this beautiful spring spirit holding a a bird nest with eggs and a birdie oh it's so beautiful okay let's see what spirit of spring is card number 34 oh wow oh look at this so we got thunder card number five six and we have spirit of spring card number three four so we have card we have numbers 
three, four, five, and six. Yeah, definitely progression here. Even if I got them one here and one there, or out of order, whatever you want to put it. We have a three, four, five, six. So again, uh, <laughs> And just as I said that, the time on the recording was 44.56. So there you go. Um, so definitely sequ a sequential number pattern here, a moving forward, going forward, and um, up into the three, four, five, six. So that one, two already taking place, already in motion. Um, yeah, very interesting here. So let's go to card number 34. Spirit of Spring, Freedom, Action, Power. Ah, interesting on page 102 and 103. Okay. She comes to touch the world into awakening again. Each cycle follows its course. And at her point on the cycle, the spirits of spring emerge and do their work. Each has their part to play from fairy to the, sorry, from fairy to the goddess who breathes life back into the still world when she comes to you no matter what part of the external cycle you're at inside it will be your spring this is your renaissance this is your time of jasmine and sweetness this is the time to consider what it is you will grow and you must hurry dear one to catch this energy which is coming to you, bursting up through the blood, through the cells and into the mind where ideas will be born that will shape the world yet to come. You are a part of the next step on this planet and you must make true, uh, wait, and you must make true and real within that world, the idea which now arise, the ideas with now, which now arise within you. Oh, that is a jam-packed sentence. <laughs> I'll try it again. You are a part of the next step on this planet and you must make true and real within that world the ideas which now arise within you. For this spirit of spring is urging you to recreate the world anew, to initiate the ideas and to fulfill the promise of conception. You have work to do, dear one, a vocation to fulfill, and it is beyond the numbing plod of the slave machine that can be our culture. You have more to give than that. It is pushing through the limitations that seem to be all about you. You are free, free to make your life your garden, free to become what your nature has destined you to be, free to make wild the life that forces within the paradigms would prefer to enslave for their purposes the power of pure fresh sweet life is within you let it pour through you arise up out of you take root in your soul and blossom through words and actions choices and commitments do not hesitate the time for action and growth is now. Touch your life as she does, for you are her and she is you. And once this is recognized, you can never be taken prisoner again. And illumination. When I grow and act, I free not only myself, but all around me are freed in return. Oh my goodness. Talk about powerful messages powerful energy with this thunder card five six and this spirit of spring three four so we have again the three four five six this um this rushing forward this building of energy this uh you know what i'm seeing is just this uh, this immense abundance of water and air and and the fire from within really um building our future really being intentional so you know hate to be uh a broken record here but truly honestly seriously and sincerely um i really feel and i know for a fact that this is talking about specifically what you're doing to prepare for this gate um this galactic gate on the 22nd you have work to do you have preparations to make you need to be specific you need to take control you need to etc cetera, etc cetera, how it talked about here in this um 
in in the text in the in the from from the spirit of spring this energy here freedom action power right and that is so much of like what it was talking about with uh with thunder freedom action power this like this is coming in your destiny is coming in what are you going to do how are you going to handle this are you prepared you know there's there's all this energy that's coming in and and again and it's like also it's it no we're not at spring yet we have probably i don't even know maybe six or eight weeks until spring i have to check i don't even know for sure but what we are working on now is is powering spring is going is is part of that too just as a side note kind of sidebar here you know just be be aware of that but mostly this is talking about you know the energy coming in with this new moon like what what it is what is it what is going on within and and with within your world your specific your specific uh expression of your life that that you have um that's that's you know working with you the energy around you where are you being uh placed where is your direction what is your focus what needs to change what needs to be transmuted? What do you need to absorb? What do you need to release? Um, you know, all of this stuff. And as we work in a really intentional way to prepare ourselves, we are, as we do that, it's like pheromones are released, right? It's like, you know, think about it as a mating dance. As you start taking care of yourself, you're like releasing these pheromones and it's like, oh, I'm like, you know, the pheromones of, of being um, available, let's say, of, of being single and available and ready to to uh to get into that the juices of love etc cetera, etc cetera. your body and everything about you your very essence starts to um put off the energy and 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 the s the the flavor of the scent of of being open like a flower you know come and pollinate me kind of thing right and the same goes for our uh, our energy when we when we draw that inward. Instead of that being the outward, like oh, you know, man, woman, whoever, whatever your bag is, whatever you're into, whatever you're attracted to, look it, I'm available. I want to be attracted, attractive to you. I want to, I want to be flirtatious and cute and whatever the the thing is that's going to attract you to me. It's like that energy, but it's your own magic, your own uh, manifestations, your own guides and guardians, everything coming in, attracting all that magic and all that energy, focusing, is, focusing it in into you, into your space, into your future, into your timelines coming um, coming in. It's very, very powerful. And we, you know, kind of take that and accept that responsibility. Like, I don't just go day to day, you know, whatever comes and whatever, you know, whatever Whatever spiritual new thing comes you know however it comes to me it's a very passive you know it's it's being passive while you're being open you want to be active and open when you're active and open that's when you're making magic happen you're alchemizing your own you're transmuting on your own your force is is that your your energy is the driving force to something being changed in creation and and in the beginning that should be you your energy your physicality your your flow your abundance your manifestation abilities your health your wellness if you're not completely in check with your with your health mentally physically spiritually emotionally then you know you have work to do if you're like nope i'm totally good body is totally healthy have a hundred percent i'm great energetically don't have any ailments i'm not on any medications i'm not depressed i'm not anxious i don't have energy problems my digestive system's totally fine i never get headaches like if you can go down the list one way and the other and there's nothing going on with you that is out of alignment then there you go you've done a fuck ton shit ton of work congratulations but most people cannot say that 
most people cannot say I from one top to bottom everything is totally in perfect <laughs> you know totally perfect right you know right now and it's okay that if it's not I mean most people aren't you know maybe it's more here and less there you know maybe it's less here and more there for people everybody's got their different thing going on you know of where we where we're lacking and being to as healthy as we could or should be you know we know that for ourselves you know you're like well I'm way better with this this aspect of my life and not so great at that aspect of my life I really need to focus you know what it is and look at there's no judgment here about it life is hard all this shit is hard all of it takes energy all of it you know we can't be going 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 at all of it all the time anyway I mean there's only so much time energy that we have in any given day and you know that shifts and changes too so the idea is to assess to evaluate to see where you're at to really get a handle on it sometimes there's so much going on there's so much chaos in the outer world that just the, keeping ourselves doing the bare minimum of the of, of our inner world and 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 what we need to do day to day just is all of it but there are times where we, you know, like a perfect time is the new moon to kind of settle things, you know, to see things for what it is to go in to kind of check in with what is in or out of alignment and make a plan as we go forward and what we're going to be, what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be handling ourselves as we move forward and, and all of that good stuff that, that we're happening now. We need to see what, what we're resisting, what we're chasing what we're wishing for what we're hoping won't happen you know it's like some of that is so programmed and is running on auto that we're not even fully um, conscious of what is driving us from moment to moment um, and that is something to really assess as we get into February as we get into this new moon energy um, quite frankly, I've been feeling for a couple of days, this new moon energy, this gearing up towards this Stargate. Um, and I guess I'm going to leave you lastly with that. I will be, oh, just to let you know, I will be going live. If you did not know, I made this announcement. I didn't schedule it. I keep forgetting to schedule it. Got to do that. Um, I will be going live on um, the 2nd to... Uh, to do an energy update and um, some or some more some oracle cards for us, um, for specifically for the start for two two, and I'm going to do a short meditation, live meditation on Instagram. This is going to be at two twenty p.m. on the second, um, on Wednesday the second, two twenty p.m. Pacific. Join me live on Instagram. I'm going to be setting it up, setting up that that live, um, and uh, just kind of ringing in the stargate getting some very specific information on that day about the stargate but generally speaking stargates are for creating dissolving and solidifying timelines and meaning that there's a lot of changes shifts and choices that need to be made and things happening how you manage yourself how you navigate how you master your frequency and don't get swept up in drama and chaos and whatever again think of thunder think of thunder as we get into the stargate from 10 from 2 2 to 2 12 that's 10 full days that's a long time 10 full days that um that these energies are going to be really really intense really intense it's kind of like who can stay in the boat going forward um and not fall off and not get caught up in the riptide and stay on point and really be focused as we move forward so you can be you know the the destination to get to 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 the 22nd um as healthy as clear as in alignment as things sorted and settled um as best they can be through this especially after this mercury retrograde this one feels to me like it was a lot of internal stuff happening and not so much external changes happening just yet and the changes that are going to be happening from the internal um awarenesses aha moments revelations you know meditations and whatever it was that we all did to, to you know have new perspectives as we move forward the actual action of that is going to be coming now.
coming after this new moon and um, coming with the Stargate and really building up um, and and really creating a new pattern in our world that we're going to be um, a kind of stepping from and into the new paradigm after this 222 business. So with that said, and I know it's a lot, um, almost here at an hour exactly. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. I'm going to be getting into the meditation with a, a little bit of a preview here. If you want to download the entire meditation, please follow the link. Go to my website to download the complete meditation for this new moon. I'm really excited about it. I know it's going to be about... Um, really helping us um, to get stable within the, the energies here. So I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, let's get to that. Um, and again, thanks for being here. Share this podcast, the information here, my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. If you're somebody who you think would have, um, has somebody to have something to share, you, I would love to have you um, as a writer on my new publication, The Messengers on medium.com, or even as a guest here on my podcast. I have a form to fill out if you would like to be a guest on my podcast. So please do that. So you have something that you feel that, um, you would like to share your journey, your story, um, how you help people, whatever. Really, really into that going into this new year as well. So again, thank you for being here. Love you so, so much. Happy new moon. Happy February. Happy second month getting into the second month of this 2022. And um, yeah, let's do this meditation. Mwah! For you to see it ending to see it ending, isolate it and see it and stop it. And then feel in your body like, oh, there it is, it stopped. So taking control of whatever that vibration, that frequency is that is not feeling good isolating it and dissolving it, deleting it, ending it in whatever way makes sense that you can see and perceive that coming to an end. And then your actual physical and energetic body seeing and feeling what it's like when it stops. And immediately feeling relaxed, at ease, peaceful, And Gaia is saying, now check in with yourself and how that feels in your body. Put your left hand on your heart center. Put your right hand on your solar plexus. And feel in your body 